I am bringing you a promised vlog. Flat locking seams on garments. And this is another toaster sweater with flat locked raglan sleeves, neckline, cuffs, and it has got the hem band flat locked on as well. Just like the one I did at Christmas with my Beyond the Pink Door Christmas tree fabric. I hadn't realised what a stir I'd cause just by flat locking some seams. But here we go. So this particular fabric is a wattle and slate, not waffle and slate, as I mentioned later on, athleisure wear jersey. It's lovely and soft and it's got a really fluid, beautiful drape. I have used virtually every single scrap in this particular top. Now, what I'm going to show you is, apart from the make, which is obviously it's already done and I've already recorded it, but when I was looking back at what I recorded, I'd recorded threading up my overlocker in white. Now, white on a white overlocker for vlogging, seriously, Judy, what were you thinking about? So I thought, hmm, I'll just have to thread it for a flat looking again. So I've got a pair of blue, navy blue, ooh leggings going through it, and they're half done as I speak. They'll pop up in Friday sews. Now, I have filmed them threading up the overlocker for flat locking in navy blue, so you can see it. Now, I can't speak for your overlockers as to whether they will do it, but I'm a firm believer in using your instruction manual. Those of you that have watched me for a while will say, does she ever stop going on about the sewing machine and the overlocker manual? No, I don't. I have got my Benina over... Benina overlocker. I have got my Benina... 880 manual upstairs because I'm doing some work for Tristan on some t-shirts and I need to reduce the stitch density. I can't remember how to do it. I know I've done it in the past. Just get out that manual and check it. And while you check your manual for one thing, you never know what you're going to find for something else. Now, baby lock overlockers come with, well, mine did. I, I'm assuming every other brands and other models of baby lock come with a similar card. And it's got all your main stitches on it. So I've got my four thread, three thread, thread overlocker. I've got the narrow overlock, the narrow overlock hem, the rolled edge hem. And I've got the flat lock. And that's what I'm using. Looking at it on the back, I've got a two thread flat lock, which is quite a wide flat lock. Ooh, maybe that's one I need to try next, actually. Just varying it. You see, three different flat lock stitches. And I've only ever used one. I, may, I need to experiment. It just, it's your learning process. So all of you that have got a so goal to improve your learning, um, dig out your manuals. Uh, I was watching Ruan last night with her latest vlog. Um, I'll try and link it in the description box below. And I know there's a special way of linking um, a YouTube handle. And I've not quite worked out how to do that yet. But Ruan, one of Ruan's sew goals is to um, learn more about her lovely new Juki sewing machine. And, and, and she's absolutely right. I, I, I'm going to jump on the same bandwagon as Ruan. Or is she jumping on the same bandwagon as me? Get out these manuals, see what they do. No further ado, let's have a look at the process of making this beautiful toaster sweater with flat lock seams. I do know that I have got one viewer ready and waiting to see what this looks like and I hope she likes the results so without any further ado let's get going this is where the threading changes because normally you'd go straight down there as I've done incorrectly and then straight down there but for the flat locking it shares the tension discs with another thread now with my overlocker I need to set it up to thread. But first of all I need to remove the right hand needle. This is going to look as if I know what I'm doing but I can tell you now folks that I have done this so many times in the past 24 hours when I did the um, toaster sweater. I know what I'm doing at the moment. So first, first one and you I don't know about all overlockers. I am not going to be generalised and say all overlockers you thread this way. All overlockers you thread that way. You need to get out the instructions for your overlocker. Now I know that my overlockers thread as I look at it from right through to left. Now I have an automatic, I'm very fortunate, I've got a very nice overlocker. Um, and 
I th I, it does have air threading. It does help with my hand issues, which, which I've gone on a little bit about. I'm really sorry. There we go, nice long bit of thread and it pops out the other end. Please excuse me leaning across here. And the next one, Maggie is getting very excited about something. So you can see now, it's easier to see the blue thread on the white machine rather than the white thread on the white machine that I did yesterday. Very clever that, wasn't it? That would be a very sensible thing to do. I'm going to have to go and see who's trying to message me. I seem to be very popular tonight. Maybe it's because I've got my machine on make a noise rather than not making a noise. Or it's Lorian asking me if I'm going to appear on Andrea's live. It's a possibility. Now, this is where the trick starts with the flat locking. And it's the way I thread the machine. So, when I got the machine, the first thing I ever made was a pair of Ula leggings flat locked because I said to David Drummond, I, I need I need to be able to flat lock. I've got to flat lock and this really can flat lock on the machine you've got. But here it goes. Now it goes through the same um, looper as the second thread. They both go through the same tension disc except it comes out and it goes through and round like this. Now this is a baby lock acclaim overlocker. And I'm not, you please do not think that your overlockers will do exactly the same as mine. As I say, they're all finely tuned machines and they all have their own idiosyncrasies. So please do not think that yours will do this. Check the manual. There we go. And that is the needle threaded. So now I'm going to pull the machine. So the next thing I have to do, apart from pulling the machine towards me, putting that through the thread guide is close the side here. I need to take it off um, threading, put it onto surging because it says surging rather than overlocking. Now for my machine, I have to have the foot down. And now I can make my chain. Yes, it's chaining. So obviously it's going to make a stitch. I have some thread. Now I cannot stress enough how important it is to do a sample. If I was giving you any tip at all, do do a sample. For flat locking, it's right sides together. It trims the side. I don't think my overlocker likes that. Thank you, overlocker. Now it's telling me that something's not right, and I know I've not done something. I have a stitch selector on the side, and I have not changed the stitch selector. So there you go. Everybody makes mistakes. Just because you have YouTube channels and you might have been sewing for years. But there you go. That's a lot better. Let me have a little look at that underneath the light. Now, I don't like that stitch. I think it needs a bit of a fiddle with. You can see it on there. Here you go. Here's the perfect stitch. And it's come out really well. So what I've done is I've actually altered the feed, the level at which it goes through the um, differential feed. So I've actually taken it back by point two. There you go. So you sew right sides together and then you pull it like this. And then you've got that, which is a beautiful sports seam. As easy as that. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, now I'm back and I've got my food away, I've got a quick dinner ready, I want to show you how quickly you can make a toaster sweater using flat locking. Now, before I start, I will have a little caveat in there. There are certain elements of the toaster sweater that will not need flat locking. So what I will simply do at that point is I'll pop my overlocker back to an overlocker and then I'll re-thread it back the other way. 
So the two raglan sleeves are the two things I'm going to do first and they require flat locking. Then I will go up and over here, that requires overlocking. The cuffs, the band and the collar require just overlocking and then putting them on and finishing them off is a flat lock. And that's what I did on the toaster sweater at Christmas. So sit back, get yourself a drink and watch me make a toaster. So I'm going to set the timer going now. I'm going to take my watch off because it's driving me mad. Sometimes I just don't like wearing watches and things. It's five to six. Let's see how long I can do this. I'm and it's really important to remember that they go right sides together. Now I'm not going to rush it because it's beautiful fabric and it is the Waffle and Slate Athleisure jersey. It's more of a t-shirt weight. I got it from a wattle and slate drop ages ago. I know it was very popular at the time and I believe, I think Rachel might have bought some and I think Tamlin might have bought some as well. So here's the back again. So that needs the second sleeve on the back. Right sides together Judy. Remember right sides together until that time when you need to bring those side seams together. Here we go. I've done the raglan sleeve bit and now I'm just going to give it a little tease to make it lie flat. Now, before when I did the other one, the, um, the Christmas one, I pulled them apart too, too far and these are looking superb. I'm really pleased with these. So I'm just going to give them... So there's a little bit of movement here I don't know if I can get the camera to come down any closer. I pressed the wrong button then. I meant to be going in. Let's see if I can get that. It's just a little bit twisted there. I'm just give it a gentle tease. Just a gentle tease out. There we go. Again, that looks really lovely. Go to the next one. Just a gentle tease. Now, there will be a natural way that they fall and you need to let them go. You need to pull with the seam. There you go. And then the last one. As I say, just check your overlocker instructions. Um, it's amazing what these machines do do. And I can remember when I got this overlocker, I knew that I could flat lock with it. And I said to David Drummonds, I said, I really want to flat lock. And they were like, you can flat lock with this. First thing I made was a pair of Ula leggings and a flat lock the seams.
have re-threaded my overlocker twice, tested the stitch, had a text conversation with my son, and I have a toaster sweater. Now, what I haven't done is to pull the seams yet because I want to see which way they will naturally fall before I do so. So here you go, look at this. Here we go, pulling the seams all the way round. And there we go, we have a toaster sweater. There we go. Can you see how the seam pulls forward? And you get this beautiful effect here. And that's what gives you that lovely sports feel to your, um, your wear, it, depending on what it is you're making. Now, you know, when you read the pattern for the toaster sweater, um, Peggy, when she's written it, has said to, to do the um, seam and then to open it out flat and to sew it down with um, a double stitch. So you could sew it together on like a, do your seam and then and finish it off on the cover stitch if you wanted to. Or obviously now we've got Maraflex, but you know, when Peggy wrote those instructions, Maraflex was a bit of a dream. It's absolutely lovely. I love the toaster sweater and this is perhaps a little on the larger size, but it's lovely for running, so it'll allow the air to breathe through. And you can see how beautifully these lines sit. And this is what caused a lot of interest. Now, I could have done the funnel necked version, but I like this one because if it's cold, I can pop it up and I can snuggle down inside it. But if it's not, it's loose enough for me to turn down like this. It's a super, super design. Um, from Soha 7. I absolutely love it. Similarly with the cuffs, there's enough cuff there for me to turn back, enough cuff there for me to pull up because there's a knot of ease in the sleeve there and it fits me beautifully across here. And just going down to the waist, can you see here, let me pull it up a little bit, you can see how it beautifully lays across here like so. I hope you've enjoyed what I've put together for you today. And maybe it will encourage you to have a go at doing some flat locking. So until my next vlog, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you've seen, give me a thumbs up. Better still, can you help me get to 3,000 subscribers? I'd love to get to 3,000 subscribers. You just have to hit this little thing in the side of the corner. Do you know, I might make another one tomorrow. Ah, oh, by the way, the best thing about this, shopped from the stash. See you soon, folks. Bye.